Vyhrocený střed dvou světů, sportovců, celebrit a velkých osobností. Nejpopulárnější český zápasník Carlos Terminator Vémola poprvé a možná naposledy v boxu, a tedy mimo svou komfortní zónu. A proti němu rapper Marpo. Jak si Vémola povede v disciplíně, o které mnozí říkají, že není jeho nejsilnější? A hlavně, v jaké se vrátí formě po více než roční pauze? Měli se utkat v MMA pod otevřeným nebem na Pražské štvanici. Jejich cesty se však rozešly, ale teď se znovu spojí. Miláček publika Miloš Melon Petrášek si to v boxu rozdá se svým slovenským rivalem a bývalým šampionem Samuelem Pirátem Krištofičem. Dokonce i šampion bantamové váhy Jonas Magard dostal chuť okusit box mezi osmi provazy. Takzvaný dánský žralok sáhl po opravdu velkém soustu. Tím není nikdo jiný než tituly ověnčený supertalentovaný bad boy Vašek Sivák. Nenáviděný nebo milovaný bohumínský rebel Baba Jaga Mikulášek si v pěstních přestřelkách libuje. A teď má šanci si to užít naplno. Po čtyřech letech nucené pauzy se do akce vrací držitel 3 o v prvním kole. Michal Kotalík, kterému se tím splní sen, v který už ani nedoufá. Možná nejlepší boxer v oktagonu a bývalý titulový vyzivatel Apollo Silva si to v boxu rozdá s neporaženým slovenským vojákem z povolání Markem Mazuchem. Michal Krčmář a Vlado Lengál. Trávili spolu čas v jedné vile v rámci Octagon výzvy. Sdíleli společný pokoj, byli parťáci, ale těmto dnům odzvonilo. Teď si oba řekli o vzájemný zápas a ten taky dostali. My se tak můžeme těšit na skvělý souboj dvou dekorovaných postojářů a šampionů svých disciplín. Společenská událost roku z pražské O2 arény. Octagon Vémola vs. Marpo. Už 21.5. v pražské O2 aréně. Lístky v sítích Ticket Portal a Ticket Master. Celý turnaj v rámci Free Prelims otevře Monika Chochlíková se svou soupeřkou Alessandrou Amazon Pachuelo. Pachuelo má za sebou velmi dobrou amatérskou kariéru. Mezi profesionálkami ale vybojovala zatím pouze jedno vítězství. Toda mi trajektoria je čo capoeira, boxeo, un poco de muay thai. Mi parte fuerte de la pelea es el boxeo. Kochlíková je nejdekorovanější zápasnicí všech dob na české a slovenské scéně. Je to mistrně světa různých organizací v K1 a tajském boxu. MMA je ale něco úplně jiného a Chochlíková si v zápase proti 23-leté Pachuelo bude muset dávat pozor na všechny aspekty boje. Žádná superka se ale bude celý boxovat postoji a všechny to budou těhat na zem a na to jsem připravena. Tak já ja bych si chtěla hlavně vyzkoušet v tom zápase to, co jsem trénovala na tréninku. To znamená, že asi bych se moc nebránila ani jít na zem. Jedna z těchto dívek, které mají obě 170 cm, bude muset dnes poprvé ve své profesionální kariéře v MMA prohrát. Doufám, že i superka bude tak kvalitní výkon a že se tam naozaj pobijeme a že diváci budou mít dobrou podívanou. I pojď boja a dar to i dar un gran show para Octagon. So good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Octagon 32. Finally, the Octagon train rolls back into Ostrava and riding it as captain is me, Brian Lacey, with Luke Barnett calling the action tonight. And Luke, what a fantastic card and what a way to open on these Facebook prelims. We've got Monica Hoplikova taking on this young lady, the Amazon warrior princess, Alessandra Pacuelo. Now this young lady, when you look at her attributes, her accolades, uh, she started with Capoeira. She's the Peruvian champ of grappling, Peruvian champ of BJJ, but in her VT she says she likes to box. That's going to be a very dangerous poison to pick against somebody with the Muay Thai background of, of Hokkakova. Yeah, Hokkakova, a multiple world time champion in K1. Um, so definitely I would more side towards the idea of getting with the grappling 
but then it's kind of an obvious game plan, you know. At the moment for uh, Alessandro when she's coming out here, she kind of feels like she doesn't want to just look for takedowns and get it to the floor and look to work her jiu-jitsu. She wants to surprise and put on a great show here at Octagon with that free prelim, and she wants to go out there, box, and look to land her hands. So, might be a bad decision, we'll find out, but uh, but she's definitely uh, got a lot of confidence going into this one. Yeah, well, she's only had one professional mixed martial arts fight. That was a victory over three rounds as well. I watched that one back, and it was her hands that did all the nice work during that fight. Controlled the distance, controlled the range. The other thing that really took to, uh, took me as far as just her fighting style, and when you look at her nickname, that warrior, the Amazonian warrior princess, uh, it was a tenacity, Luke. She likes to fight. She likes to get bloodied up. She doesn't mind getting that nose broken. She doesn't mind uh, coming out and looking like she's had a real war. That's what she wants, and she's going to get it with Hockwikova. Yeah, South American horse, you know, that fire, la fuego. She's going to come out here strong. She's not afraid to get dirty and to get in danger and throw big shots, you know, which I find a lot of the time the will to compete can always be the difference, you know, that, the, 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 like you said, the tenacity, coming forward, getting into dirty boxing positions and throwing heavy hands, that that means a lot in fighting really early on, especially when they're so early on in their careers. Obviously, you know, the K1 background and all that sort of stuff, but for her coming out here, she's really trying to shock the world and make an upset happen. Uh, you touch on it nicely there, because the, the, one of the things, the weapons that Monica Holikova has got is her just intimidating demeanor. You saw it at the stare downs, the weigh-ins yesterday in front of 2,000 people, by the way. What a moment that was. But she can break someone before they've even got into the cage. That night before when she's had that stare down, she'll be the last thing seared in the mind of her opponent. And it doesn't seem to have phased Alessandra. Yesterday, she gave as good as she got in the stare down. She's come out here in front of what is already a filling up arena, uh, the Ostrovar Arena uh, uh, tonight. And she doesn't look phased one bit. As somebody who corners a lot of fighters and coaches a lot of upcoming fighters, you can feel the nerves right backstage. You can feel when they're not quite on point, where their mind's like, she looks completely dialed in to me. Yeah, dialed in and composed. And I think that could, could do with a lot of competition, like you said. Peruvian champion in grappling. She's done a, competed a lot. She seems very, 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 very calm. There's a slight issue going on at the moment with, with some sort of sponsorship on the body. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how they handle this. Ah, that, I didn't spot that well, well seen there, Luke. There seems to be, yeah, she's got across her midriff, her sponsor. First time I've ever seen that uh, happen, and obviously they're on top of everything here at Altigan, so it'll just take a moment for them to sort out this situation, and then we'll get the action going. Well, let's take a moment as we look down on this arena, Luke. Look, we've both been at shows around Prague, uh, in uh, uh, Slovakia as well. This will be the first time it, it, it's since COVID that we can have a full crowd. How excited are you to feel the energy? Because the, the Octagon fans are something special. They are something when you see and feel the energy that they bring is amazing. Yet alone what will potentially be, well, what will be 12,000 people tonight. Yeah, 12,000 bodies in here tonight. Like you said, we've not had a sold out arena. We've had four or 5,000 people, in, but not an arena. Like this is a sold out arena. We've got 12,000 fans coming. 02, we had 11,500, but that's a capacity of 20,000. So this doesn't count as sold out. <laughs> this one is sold out. So it's, uh, you know, I'm really interested to see the energy the Octagon fans bring. It'll be my first time witnessing a sold out arena show here Mine for too. Mine too. All the restrictions have meant that they haven't been able to go to capacity despite the fact the want and the need is there for the fans to come in. And you can just see they've just taped up that sponsor. They couldn't get it off, so they've just wrapped it up. <laughs> Thinking on their feet, last minute things. <laughs> but again, it doesn't seem to have phased her. And Sandra to having a laugh and enjoying the moment. And now finally, finally stepping inside the Octagon cage, beating it as she does. The Peruvian flag draped over her corner, the blue corner there. Now wait and listen to the noise for her opponent. She is, what a smile, what a moment. This is Monica Volcano Hoklikova making this walk, a smile on her face. You can see the emotion in her eyes, Luke. Now this young lady, 26 years of age, I mean, don't be deceived by this 
Uh, without sounding patronising, this extremely beautiful young lady swaggering towards the cage down the red carpet. Because once she's done touching gloves, saying hi to the fans, getting the final checks in the cage, she is an absolute beast within there. She has had 70 plus kickboxing Muay Thai fights. She is multiple time champion in multiple areas, whether it's Slovakia, Europe, the world at kickboxing and Muay Thai. A consistent competitor. And the reason she's moved into mixed martial arts was because of COVID. There was no opportunities for her to fight. So she stepped up and she said, well, if MMA is where it's at, I'm going to step in there and that's what I'm going to do. And since she's been in here, she has been I have been mesmerized by what she's been able to achieve so far in the cage. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, when you look at the record of 2-0 and you don't know the backstory behind this girl, it's uh, she's, uh, like I said, the high, most highly decorated athlete out of the Slovakia and the Czech Republic combined just in K1. You know, she holds multiple titles and she's an incredible athlete. And she's, you have touched on it earlier, fearsome once she gets in there. She's nice calm comes out and has fun you'll see the switch when she gets in there and then the bell goes and they get to go she will come forward and she will throw heavy heavy shots from every limb and every angle likes to spin likes to kick high she she's extremely exciting to watch and listen to that let's take a moment oh my goodness already in here the energy absolutely electric and this our free Facebook prelim fight. You can join us live for the main card, which will be topped by Cosma Kinije for the welterweight title. But first of all, here we have this strawweight bout. The tail of the tape, three years the younger, is Alessandra Pajuelo taking on Monica Koklikova. 2-0 versus 1-0 height and reach on the side of Monica Koklikova. And this will be the opening bout of Octagon 32. The return to Ostrava. And also returning to Ostrava, the one and only Andrej Nevodny. Dámy a pánové, ještě jednou krásný dobrý večer. Máme před sebou první zápas na Free Pradim z turné Octagon 32. Pojďme si představit obě děvčata. Nejprve Modrý roh. 23 let, 166 cm, 52,5 kg na váze. Contacto Livre, pod trenérem Žánem Felipem Prestésem, Dos Santose má na svém kontě mezi profesionálky. Jeden zápas dokázala v něm zvítězit, mezi amatérkama dokázala sbírat čtyři vítězství. Za Chile, modrém rohu, Alejandra Amazon Pachuelo. Červený roh, 26 let, 170 cm, 52,3 kg na váze. Viktor Jim Trenčím a j MMA System. Po trenéry Tomášem Tadlánkem, Jakubem Millerem a Rastislavem Klimáčkem má na svém kontě v MMA dva zápasy, dvě vítězství, jedno ukončení na submisi. V červeném rohu v rámci Neruda Cupu za DeepCBD.cz a také za Slovensko světová šampionka Monika Volkano Koflíková! Follow my instructions at all time, protect yourself at all time. If you are in any situation of danger, you have to show me you are still in the fight, protect yourself. Touch glove if you want. Go back to your corner, please. Thank you. Set and ready to rock and roll. Octagon 32 underway with this strawweight contest. Monica Hoklikova in the red corner, black and gold. Taking on the Peruvian. And Lissandra Pajuelo. She is in the red and gold. Blue, and blue corner. Me, Brian Lacey alongside Luke Barnett. And she's come out strong, trying to take the center there. Oh, a nice stiff jab from Alessandro early. Alessandro said she'd like to box, that's what she wants to do, come out here and throw hands. Doing a great job early on. Yeah, pushing forward, but this is where Monica Koklikova tunes in and dials into range so quickly. We've seen it before in their previous fights. Nice straight right there landed as well as Alessandro came forward. But like we touched on earlier on the walkout, the tenacity you can see of Alessandro, she comes forward by big, big shots. Yes. Certainly wanting to make this a fight, not intimidated one bit by the crowd, nor the aura of Monica Hoklikova. Oh, nice overhand right. 
Yeah, the straight right hand of Monica is, is fantastic. She varies it up very, very straight. A little bit of a tilt in it. A little bit of a bend over that, that lead hand. Hoka Kova said in the VT, she's so used to people trying to take her down. But right now, it looks like Alessandra looks like she's willing to test metal on Gretel. Right, she takes a few more of those leg kicks, I think it will change. That was very deep in on the thigh. Right in front of us here at the commentary, again goes to that leg kick. You can see a bruise straight away. <laughs> Just moving that distance perfectly there. Showing a few marks on the face though is Monica. But has been caught in a few flurries. Again going to that low leg kick right behind the knee in the same spot. Oh, that stiff, stiff jab pushes the head back of Alessandra. That's already troubling her, that leg now. As you can see that her weight's a little bit off. Oh, go to it again. She can see that as well. Monica now dialing it all, and the right hand comes over the top. Now when she's, she's going to start putting things together now. She's going to use hands and feet together, throw to that leg, faint to that leg, go to the head. And this is the Thai plum clinch she knows so well and uses so well. Needs to be careful with that though, up against the fence. Great work here now. The Amazon forward pressure, nice head position. Looking to get this body lock. Oh, dragging it down to the mat. That's a big moment for Alessandra. Good guard here though, and nice elbows from Monica as well. She did say she doesn't mind flying off of her back on the floor. Well, her first fight was actually for Bellator. She took that, uh, having after done one month's worth of jiu-jitsu, won that by submission by Scorpion Crunch. Where she uh, straightens her legs and grabs her hands behind her own knees and then squeezes. She might even look for it again. Difficult one to get people to tap to, but that one she pulled off. She's just got such a great frame for jiu-jitsu off your back as well. You know, her, her length and the flexibility that comes from her K1 kickboxing background. She, she's trying to spin here, create an angle to look for some sort of armbar attempt or maybe a triangle. But constantly working from the bottom as well, those elbows. It's a bit different uh, with, with, with women fighting as well because of the braids in the hair. It actually does, def it, it helps defend with the elbows a little bit. So you get a lot of cuts caused when men do this elbow, but not so many with women because half the head's protected with the braids because it's heavy, heavy braids on top. So it's not quite as effective, but it still hurts. <laughs> it's still that point of the elbow coming in and down. And Monica Hochlikova training at Victory Gym and Jamin MMA Systems. And they have been super impressed with how well. Look at that get up as well there, Luke. And that just shows they said she just takes to the sport so well. She's an expert, a master of, uh, of the stand up, but she really has embraced the that ground game as well. Big moment there for Monica using the cage to get back to her feet. I was about to say she's right by the fence. Let's see if she uses it. And she's before I even got to mention it, she did it. Great balance displayed, but call, call the kick. Did Alessandra. And again, back to her feet. Oh, the front teat right to the uh, the chin there. Sometimes we want to Oh, and again. As well. And again, she's caught this up high, looking to turn this and get it to the mat. She does so, Luke. That's impressive once again from Alessandra. And this position in particular, she likes to work, try and get that beat down position, that side control. Or cien kilo, if you want to speak in Spanish. Cien Kilo on the side control for the Peruvian now with this underhook position. And Monica hits now, died. She's got good guard. But now once you pass this position, I, I experienced this myself, when you've got a long frame, you take so well to jiu-jitsu in the guard. You know, your setups, your triangles, and all that sort of stuff. When they pass the legs and they get to this position, it's much more difficult. Does well to retain. It gets back to her feet, though. Ten seconds left in this first round, and we really have got to fight. Oh! Big team drops her. Alessandra responds extremely well, though. What an opening round. Not the one we expected. Many people, you look at the tip spot bets and you listen to the people talking about this fight. They thought Monica Hoklikova was going to walk through Alessandra. That is not the case, Luke. Yeah, Alessandra wanted to show that she's here and she's not afraid of her. Definitely that first round you've seen here. I mean, the more highlight moments definitely come from Monica. But Alessandra had her moments too. Great takedowns, converted quite a few of them. Got some good ground and pound as well. And it's, even catching the kicks as well, Luke. Go on, talk us through some of this action. That right hand was beautiful for Monica. She landed it a few times as well. Here's another Ooh. one. And she, I felt like when she started to mix it up and she got it going, Alessandra did the right thing and dragged her down to the mat. And just 
you know, played with the timing a little bit. So then Monica had to re-establish on the feet and get back up and all those sort of things. But I was really impressed by Monica on the ground, in the guard, good elbows from the bottom, great stand up here. This is great awareness of where you are in the cage. And like you said, she has a lot of experience, but not beautiful head kick, caught though. And that team, she Ooh. went for it multiple times, got caught multiple times as well. The girl from Peru doesn't mind the shot. She doesn't mind walking through something to land one. Not at all. Off we go again, round number two, Hoklikova, red corner, Alessandra in the blue. Let's see if Hoklikova goes back to that lead leg. There was a lot of damage that you pointed out in that first round. Just when we're repeatedly targeting the, the, the behind the, uh, the knee of that lead left leg. Went low that time as well to the car for a little bit. Nice from Alessandra mixing up the hands and the double. Great balance. And that seems like there's a, a certain game plan that the corner want implemented now from Alessandra. They want that distance closed, they want the clinch. Yeah, which was expected early yeah. on, but we saw her give it give it her all in that first round on the feet. She landed some decent shots, but it becomes apparent as the fight goes on. I don't think she wants to get teeped in the face anymore. I think that's what it was. <laughs> oh, oh nearly beautiful. a mistake. Nearly a mistake though, but nicely turned. Yeah, nice lateral drop there to get it to the mat again. And all she needs to do for me is pass this guard. If she can pass this guard and now has the half guard, can kill Monica on the, on the bottom. Monica's very effective from the guard. You can see she's, she's spent a lot of time there. But these positions are a little bit more difficult for her, especially when you've got a heavy, heavy body on top of you, good hip position. And for Alessandra, this is what she needs to do to win the fight. This is what she needs. She needs good position. She needs to take her time. Not got swept, not get swept. And the other side of this as well is uh, as much... Whoa! Oh! Up kick! But she, she dropped back for the leg off oh! at the same time. It looked, looked like she might have got caught there. This could there. be a heel hook attempt here as well. Now Monica's got to be... Got to respect Super, this position, right? Super careful here. She has the lace. She has the foot now as well. And as we said on the walkout, Alessandra is the Peruvian champion of grappling and BJJ in her class. Now the knee is free now, so a lot safer is Monica. She tries to get back up and she has control of both the hands. So she's, in, she's not out of, the, out of the wars yet, but she's much safer than she was a second ago. But in this fight, in these seven minutes alone that we've seen so far, we've seen more questions asked of Monica Hotlikova in MMA than we have in any of her previous bouts. Beautiful work from Ooh. Monica. A great reversal to get back on top. Very, very good. Awareness again, like you said, questions asked. Almost going for an arm, but I can't do that when your legs strap. <laughs> and now put herself back on the bottom. She did a fantastic escape. This is good work from Alessandra in the second round. And the other side to this coin as well, Luke, is Monica with all of experience on the feet. She knows how to fight efficiently from there. It's different right on the ground. It's different if you're not used to uh, conserving or using your energy in these spaces. It, your gas tank can disappear without you knowing. Yeah, it's, it's more about feeling comfortable. You know, if you feel comfortable when you're relaxed, yeah. like she is on the feet, it doesn't matter how much energy, energy you exert. But when you do things out of fear and worry and, and, and you don't feel 100% comfortable or 100% confident, it really does that the gas tank. And she's falling back from his leg again. Dropping down now, working on that left leg of Monica Hoglikova. Doesn't quite have anything of danger here, but needs to be careful as she spins that knee. The knee line's beaten, well done. She needs to see that left leg. She wants to get that knee turned through the legs to try and escape. Or now, now she needs to attack this, this right foot, the right ankle, not the left ankle, the other ankle that's, that's pinning her. She could just peel, peel that off and she's free. So this right foot's going to come off on its own. Now yeah. she's free. Now she's in no danger whatsoever. Going for the straight ankle lock. Just, just a pain oh, attack. A little bit of a twist. More of a sweep then than that. An actual submission attempt. And now she's going on that straight foot lock. Yeah, back on that straight Achilles. I'd be very surprised if she can convert this with Monica. But she's trying to... Yeah, Monica not even in danger here or worried. She's trying to cause damage. Good idea, getting the weight on the foot is what you want to do. Stands up well. 
And the crowd now starting to roar behind their fighter, Kovacova. 30 seconds, steps over nicely, but look at the reversal. Just a little bit of a space there, and Alessandro responds. Yeah, a slight error of balance, and uh, from that, manages to get back up on top. Great round, this for Alessandro. Just ticking away now, but like you said, a fantastic round and the game plan seemed to be laid out very early on from Alessandra from the uh, the instruction from a corner. Close that distance, get the clinch, make this more of a grappling bout. And look at the heavy breaths as well coming from Monica now. <laughs> Big smile between the two and a hug. Very competitive second round. Yeah, this is a tough one to score indeed. First round. And second. A lot of leg attacks coming from Alessandra. Very interesting indeed. Yes, he had a lot of moments, a lot of attacks on legs. Didn't quite get, get anything, like a, a, a real value or danger, but constantly attacking, constantly exchanging. This was a beautiful throw here, nice toss. And this was the up kick that we saw, which did land, but then she kind of converted it into a leg lock attempt. Got me a little excited from the angle we're sat at. It yeah. looked like <laughs> I was on my feet. And then here we see more of that top pressure, but again, just an awkward position for Monica to work from. You can see she wants to cause damage. She really is from every position trying to throw something that damages. But great work indeed from Alessandra. Round three, third and final round. Look how close the odds are now as well, Luke. Still Hoklikova in front, but they have been reduced massively by the tenacious performance we've seen tonight from Alessandra. Yeah, we did say on the walkout, being game, one in a fight, coming in here and putting it on her. That's what you need to do when you're fighting someone like Monica. You have to get in her face and show you're not afraid of her. If you back away and if you let her settle and you let her get her rhythm, she's impossible to deal with. Ooh, bit of a desperate shot there, though, Luke. Desperate was the word, definitely. You can see the blood now pouring from the nose. I think she's taking the heavier breaths out of the two. Converting takedowns and getting double legs it definitely is harder work. Ooh. Nice stiff one, two. That pushed the head back there to Alessandra. They're yeah, struggling with the range a little bit now. But what a way to open this card. The card is absolutely stacked with fan favorites. I'd really like to see Monica mix uh, some leg attacks in now. You know, go back to kicking that low leg. Still, still yeah. see a bruise there. Nice right hand. But she seems to be throwing only hands or only feet, not mixing it together, which she does do very, very well. But I think she's a bit worried about the takedown attempt. Yeah, so. it looks like those those high kicks have been scrapped from her corner. They don't want her throwing anything that Alessandra could catch and convert. I think that's the advice in between round two and three. Don't get taken down. Move, move and throw, move and throw. And she's doing a great job of it now. You can see she's only really thrown one or two shots. But she's never really in danger of getting taken down, which is what she needs to do. Nice leg kick again. Always hits the exact same spot on the leg. Needs to not get too hungry and overcommit to that right hand. Coming too into the range that she doesn't want to be in. Just keep doing this. Discipline now. Yeah, this is discipline and experience shining through in those 70 plus stand up fights that she's had. That leg kick hurt. You could see it buckle. And Alessandra wincing now. She looks a little bit frustrated. And what a response. This is a, a, a touch on that experience she's had. To not get emotional after a round like that second round, Luke, where you could feel maybe I'm behind, maybe all this crowd, this pressure, but look at just discipline. Look how just fundamentally sound she is being in this, this third round. Yeah, she's putting on a great performance in this third, and Alessandra struggling with the range. Not quite sure. Another warning just about fingers going out. He's, he's, this is the third time the referee has warned Alessandra about having those fingers pointing at the opponent, not up or close fist. That leg kick is paying dividend in this third. You can see it slow down, Alessandra. Every time she lands it, I feel it here. And oh, she's she... not, yeah, now it's coming straight up as soon as there's even a slight twitch from that Oy, right leg. Oh. That one bent. I'd love to see her faint that and go high. I'd love to see her go high with this right kick. She's really established that low kick. And again, in a lot of pain. 
Here's Alessandro now so afraid of that kick. 150 seconds left in this third and final round. Oh, and now she's closing the distance. This is the moment for Alessandra. Can she switch this round? The momentum of this round. Yeah, big important moment right now. Monica needs to defend this. She's digging that left underhook. Needs to be careful of her base and her legs as well. We've seen a few good attempts at throws from Alessandra. It's a nice Greco. So she just can't allow her hands to get attached. And there's the drop. Nice level change there. Good response in the hips and the spreading of the legs there. The base of Monica Hoklikova. Switches to the single. Head on the outside single, though. A little bit less effective. Still makes it work, though. The hip highs, pushes down on that head and drags oh. back. Beautiful defense. Textbook stuff. Needs to be careful wrapping that arm around now. And continues and gets. Converts that takedown. And now on top where she wants to be, Alessandra. Monica needs to show some urgency to get back to her feet. We saw it in the earlier rounds, but going into the final 30 seconds of the third round now, this oh. is where questions have to be answered. What an impressive performance. Win or lose from Alessandra Pajello. My goodness. To come in here, to open the car, to come up against what is a, a, a just a huge fan favorite here at Octagon. And then to rise to the occasion like this. And again, I say that win or lose, she's going to have gained some fans and no doubt another opportunity on this, uh, this promotion. Yeah, looks does well and looks to end the round on top here, causing damage. Um, but more damage was definitely caused by Monica in that round, especially with that low leg kick. So even though she ended the round on top, I'd say for me the clearest round out of all three yep, was the third round. I will go with that as well, my goodness. Not but sure how this one has gone, but I feel like Monica had a beautiful display in that third round early on, great control of the distance. And what a way to tantalize and tease you for the rest of the card here. You can join us, Octagon.tv, the main card, topped by Cosma versus Kinesia for the welterweight title. Now, here's some of the action. Luke, just talk us through a few of these. As you can't see this on the uh, the camera, but the, uh, the the corner is carrying Alessandra around the, uh, the cage there as if she's already had her hand raised. That was beautiful switch there to the southpaw. That's how she managed to close the distance. Um, and managed to convert this takedown. And again, tenacity, like we said. Monica put up defense, and after defense, after defense. But Alessandra manages to end on top. I feel like she didn't cause that much damage. We get to see the stats right now. Significant strikes, definitely in the favor of Monica. And But it's, it really does tell the tale. On the ground, Alessandra seemed to have the edge, maybe the advantage on the feet. Hoklikova, but what do we know? It's the judges that will score this. And we have the final scores coming in. One man, one man alone. We need to announce it, and that man is Andre Novotny. Dámy a pánové, známe výsledek. Pojďme se podívat na to, jak zápas viděli bodový rozhodčí. So let's see how the judges score this fight. 30-27, 30-27, 29-28, 29-28, 30-27, 30-27. Vše pro vítězku, all for the winner, kterou se stává. And winner coming from the red corner, Monika Koklíková. Tak, Moniko, kde jsi? Tu jsem. Gratuluju. Děkujem, děkujem. No nemáš zač, ale bylo to, byly to nervy. Boli, boli. To jsou ry rychlý odpovědi, já nemám tak rychlý otázky. Uh, proč to boli, boli nervy? Uh, Co nešlo tak, jak mělo jít? Vyšlo, neš, nešlo, nedostal som to úplne presne ako do zápasu, mal som dneska nejaké zdravotné problémy súvisejúce so záchodom, <laughs> tak som rada, že ma to nechytilo tuto na zápase. Nie, neboj sa, nič to bolo z jedla, ktoré si nám zaplatili na hoteli, takže pôjde. A... Ty seš milá. Ďakujem. 
ďakujem, ďakujem. <laughs> Ale nevedela som sa úplne dostať na ten zápas, nevedela som moc dobre brániť tej takedowny, myslela som, že mi to pôjde v zápase lepšie. Ale tak ako sa hovorí, na tréningu bude všetko ľahšie ako v zápase. Ale som rada, že viem, čo mám rezervy, budem na tom pracovať. A na budúce, keď sa tu ukážem, tak to bude lepšie. Co říkáš na fanoušky, ktorí ťa roztleskali hned v první minúte, první okola? Pane Bože, to bolo skvelé. Ďakujem vám, že ste došli. <laughs> A že podporujete takéto akcie, dosť to pomáha aj nám zápasníkom, keď tu není poloprázdna hala, ale sú tu ľudia, ktorí nám pozbudzujú. Je to neuveriteľné a vďaka vám neuveriteľný zážitok. Ďakujem ešte raz. Moniko Kochlíková, ďakujeme moc, vítězka dnešního večera.